All right, all right. We're here, though. We're here, and we're... Let's see. Okay, okay. Oh, no. Almost ended the stream by accident. Make sure we're live. Old Tiger's new shoes, box of cheese. Okay, okay. Old Tiger's new shoes, box of... <laughs> okay all right audio video is good what's up man how you guys doing welcome to the live stream thanks for stopping by uh please hit like i'd appreciate that man it really helps the stream out i'm gonna be kind of sweaty too i was out exercising and then uh <laughs> and uh sipping hot tea so um and it's on uh 60 fps by accident oops <laughs> What's up, man? So, I'm rested today. I got some sleep last night. I want to give you some flash updates with regards to whatever's going on today with Brian Laundry, And then I have a new story at the end of the stream. So, um, I'm going to move you guys over to that new story after. And like I've been saying for a while, we're going to get cranking things a little bit higher. More stories. More missing people. Not even just missing people. Crimes or anything like that. We're going to be covering that stuff. So I appreciate you joining, man. Uh, let's switch it up here. Sounds really weird. Audio should be good, bro. I just did an audio check. I just did an audio check. Sounds really weird. Yep. All right. So, oh, I think it might be off a little bit. I don't know. It's kind of weird looking at myself. <laughs> It could be the 60 FPS. What's up, man? What's up? Welcome, welcome. So let's start with um, a couple of things, man. A couple of things. First of all, wh why not start with Nancy Grace, right? Let's hit, it, let's hit it off with Nancy, see what she had to say. Talk to you. I was looking forward to this because I want to get your take on a couple of different things. And Trace has some great questions, too. First of all, what do you think changed when they found this evidence or what possibly led to them deciding to call him a murder suspect for the first time? I believe the reason they're calling him a murder suspect is because all along they believed he murdered Gabby and now they can say that openly without infringing on his constitutional rights because I do believe if those are human remains, they are Brian Laundrie's. Uh, and the attorney as well said that he believes it's his, it's a high probability that it's uh, his remains, Brian's. Here's the thing. Yes, it's highly coincidental that the parents go out to search and within an hour <coughs> they find Brian Laundry when he has managed to evade canines, scent dogs, cadaver dogs, drones, people. I mean, the whole shebang. And now within an hour they find him. Mm -hmm. Too coincidental? Possibly. However, I find that to be very shallow thinking. You got to think to the next step, the logical conclusion of that. If those are Brian Laundry's remains, what? The parents planted that too? No. This may very you know, well be Brian Laundry. There's a lot of people out there thinking that it was planted. I've heard all kinds of conspiracies. I, I don't like, I don't see, I don't see them planning it there. And I hate I mean, it, it is because weird. there's no justice. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the family did say, the, the family attorney came out and said, listen, the parents told, told the FBI this is where he was. This is the area mm -hmm. where he was a, a while back. So it's not just coincidence. This is what the family attorney is saying. And that area was covered with water. I'm wondering, Nancy, what was in the notebook? I mean, why, when they had the sudden change, what's in the notebook? Do they find potentially a suicide note, a confession? Is there something in there that we don't know about? Absolutely. And at first I was very distraught because uh, the whole area, my Apache and Carlton Reserve, was largely underwater. It's often flooded with water because it's a swamp. But even more so, when I heard there was a notebook, I thought, oh, no, it was underwater, too. But 
It was in that white dry bag, we believe, which we always take when we go camping. So you don't want certain mm. things to get wet. If it was in there, we've got a chance. Do I believe Brian Laundry wrote his thoughts down? Absolutely. So it could be interesting. What's going to have that? Uh, what's going to have the possibility? Of what's in that notebook? And if it was in that dry, you know, to, meant to keep it dry in that bag. Hey. This guy was very introspective. I'm sure he poured all of his soul thoughts into that notebook. I think we may find something there. But what's it going to prove? What we already know. He murdered Gabby. Now, I know the parents are in pain. I understand that. But I wonder, between those days, September 1 and September 11, when they were all together, refusing Gabby Petito family phone calls and emails. Mm -hmm. What was going on in their minds? So I, so a question on that then, Nancy, as, as you said, there might not be justice in, in, in the case. But if, if the parents either, maybe they never asked Brian about where Gabby was. I mean, if I, I just find all of that pretty That's hard a good to point. believe. Could they possibly? I think uh, Michelle said bag had a, had a hole. That is true. I did notice that there was a, there was a hole there. Possibly be still criminally charged with something. Well, here's the deal. Unless they overtly performed an act, if they lied to the police, if they helped him cover up, if they helped him go on the run, unless they did that, they are not going to be charged. And they will be on the hot seat. Let me tell you, everybody wants justice for Gabby. And now that we think that's Brian Laundry, which is yet to be determined, Maybe through dental records, if he had been decomposed underwater for that long, there could be nothing left but soup at this point. We'll mm -hmm. need the dental records. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be looking at the parents, mm -hmm. but unless they overtly did something, they're not going to be charged. When you fail to act, mm. when you refuse to act under our jurisprudence, that is not a crime. And what the, the lawyer says, Bertolini, the lawyer, he didn't just fall off the turnip truck, people. He's mm. no idiot. Uh, mm. He's very carefully parsing his words. I wouldn't pay any attention to anything a defense lawyer said on this. All right. I think one of the questions, uh, I'm sorry, Daniel, I, one of the questions I had was when the parents went out there and they took Brian Laundrie's car back from that preserve, right. they had a pretty good idea that he was not coming home. I think they had an idea, and just think about it. If we could have found him then, there may be justice in a court of law. But because of that, we never will. Nancy, tell us about your special that's coming up on this Sunday night. It's Sunday. Well, thank you for the super chats. Race Trail says this ain't Brian. It ain't him. Barrel Parker, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for always keeping us informed. As soon as they confirm whose remains those are, the better. Tragic situation regardless. Thank you, Michael, for becoming a new member. By the way, for all the new people that just joined, uh, there's going to be a new story, an interesting one about a missing girl in Australia premiering after this live stream so right now and i i streamed in the wrong fps by accident so it's probably causing a little bit of issues Sunday night 10 p.m but, eastern um, the goal is to get through this asap and then we'll get to the new story we're not going to be here for like three hours like yesterday <laughs> well canine unit had been at the reserve this clip was interesting too i thought this was from news nation and the reason i thought this was interesting is because they talk about the cadaver dogs and how and why didn't they pick up on human remains before a lot of people are wondering about this doesn't make any sense they brought on um i guess an expert or whatever somebody that knows about cadaver dogs and he stated that they can actually smell remains through water so let's check Earlier this out this month to assist law enforcement searching for brian so the question of course is how were they not able to find this earlier Joining me now, now to talk more about the search is canine handler and former police officer Kyle Hayen. Thanks very much uh, for coming on the program. Appreciate it. So talk to me about the way that cadaver dogs work. I mean, if they had cadaver dogs out there a month ago in this basic area, even if there was water there, would the dogs have been able to find the body? Uh, thank you for having me. And if the body had been there when they went by with cadaver dogs and the body had been there for more than two or three minutes, the odor would have come through the water. And yes, they should have been able to locate that body. 
So mm. just to be clear, cadaver dogs can sniff out a body even if it's underwater? That's correct. Just quickly, take us through the training that these dogs go through, because I think that some people don't realize that this is different from the way that other police canines are trained. Thank you guys for coming. It is. Um, and there's, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. The methodology that I trained with was you actually use human parts in training the dog. So you bury parts of a human, um, could have been medical surgery. Um, you let them deteriorate. When I was in Germany doing some training, opened a freezer one time and I looked at all sorts of human parts, not breakfast, so close the door, off we go. But that's what you have to do with a cadaver dog is you are using human parts. Uh, yep. It can't be necessarily from a medical hospital all the time that treats cancer because you're training a cancer dog and not a human cadaver dog. So, the parts so let me ask be, you this. Yes. Knowing, knowing what you know, as you do, I mean, you, you, you know exactly how these uh, dogs work, what they can find, what they can't find. Does this make sense to you that the cadaver dogs were out there previously and they didn't find anything? And now the family, the parents of Brian Laundrie go with the authorities to the scene today and they're almost immediately able to find his personal items and his remains. Kind of weird. It's highly suspicious. If, if the body was there at that time, X weeks ago, and if it's the same dog and the same quality of dog or same quality of training, yeah, they should have found it. They, they would have detected Landry's body. So, so the question, of course, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't. I, I figured because of the water, I believe I didn't know that they could the smell or whatever they would come. You know, the dogs can still smell it. This guy's saying they can. Of course, now becomes maybe he was still alive at that time. I mean, you know, you have to if you have the faith in the dogs that you do, you have to believe then that at the time the dogs were there, if they were in the same area, then he wasn't dead at that time. Assuming this is his body. Assuming that it's his body, and it's a lot of things falling into place all at one time, and it's kind of hard for me to swallow. Um, gee, the parents go there. Gee, they find all this stuff that's supposedly been out there for weeks and a human body. So, or parts of a human body. So it's, if the dogs are well-trained, well-maintained, and we're in that area, then yeah, they should have smelled the odor of the human. Right. Um, all right, Kyle, thank you so much. So that was a really interesting clip, man. I don't know if I put it up there. Uh, let me get the Super Chats real quick. Uh, we're going to be kind of blazing through some of these updates. We're not going to stay as long as yesterday. And I have a new story at the end of the stream, so I would appreciate if you guys join me for the new story. Like I said, I've been giving you guys a heads up. Once we start cracking with the stories, it's going to be hard for you to keep up. So make sure you sub subscribe with the notifications turned on, all notifications, because um, if not, even with all notifications, people don't get all the notifications. Uh, real quick, uh, so we got Jose. The, the bag probably has a hole because of a gator eating him and maybe punctured it. Possible. I, I was thinking, yeah, he might have encountered some sort of animal wildlife out there. Nancy, it's not Brian. I think he left it there and told mom where it was, and he's not dead. That's interesting. How crazy would it be if these guys come back, you know, after doing whatever DNA forensic analysis, and it's not him? That would be nuts, right? Like that, like story would be like again, like huge question mark. I mean, there's already a bunch of question marks. Ashley, thank you for the super chat. All that's happening right now is getting attention off Brian, so he can go far, far away. He probably cut his finger off and left it there, faked his own death. Yeah, I wonder exactly like what kind of body part was it? Um, let me see. One more here. Katie, thank you for the super chat. Have you heard about the woman who was missing for weeks in Alabama? 
and then found deceased. Oh, I heard about that in a police van in a police van at the station. They're saying she did it to herself. I heard about that. I have had a chance to cover it. I read a little bit about it. Um, interesting that they're saying she did it to herself. Might be an interesting story to cover. Miss Maribel, thank you for the super chat. I haven't slept in days. Following the story from Netherlands. Damn, great work, Mel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you got to make sure you get some good sleep if you can. You know, don't let your let your body suffer. I mean, I do that sometimes too, but you got to find some sort of balance. By the way, really quickly before we watch this next clip, thank you, uh, My Wine Radio, for the membership. So I guess apparently people are looking into the protesters. People are doing, I guess, background checks. The internet's doing what the internet does. And apparently one of the protesters, I'm not going to say the person's name, has like a laundry list of domestic TV situations, even strangulation, just a, just a list. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. I mean, maybe it's kind of neither here nor there. It made me think a little bit of um, the coroner because one time randomly we're doing the stream. Remember that one night we're hanging out, we're reading about the coroner resigning. That's what they say from the hospital. And we encounter this article where he shot at his ex-wife. I'll just say allegedly, even though it's in the article, shot at his ex-wife. And I'm like, damn, man, all these people over here advocating and they themselves are like perpetrators. I'm just like, what the heck is going on? You know what I'm saying? Bruh, I'm just kind of like, okay, <laughs> what the heck is going on? Uh, Sham Peters, thank you for the super chat. My husband thinks this is just a distraction so that he can move a little more freely since the world isn't looking as hard for him now. That's true. And it seems like all the sightings have kind of like died out, kind of like slowed down. Everything's kind of quiet. What happened to all the sightings? Kathy, thank you for becoming a member. Gracias. Red Vision, thank you for coming back and thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Oh, I just saw. Did I, did I read Momo? Oh, Momo, hit, please hit like and the subscribe button, please. Thank you, Momo. And thank you for the help with some of the links here. Uh, this was from yesterday. Let me get you a bigger screen. This is video that was caught of uh, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry searching this morning. No Ellie anywhere near them. You can see Christopher walk off the trail. It appears that he knew exactly where he was going, found evidence, it just picked it up, and he went on his way. Um, and this is from the Vodka and Crime Society Facebook group. I guess. Apparently, I'm surprised I'm in a group. <laughs> It's kind of weird. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. MP, thank you for the super chat. If it turns out not to be him, They'll probably charge the parents with aiding and abetting to smoke them out. I don't know if they have enough yet, though, for that. Snow Bunny, thank you for the super chat. I truly believe Brian's things were planted out there. They even wet, they even wet the notebook and let it dry out. Doubt he was ever there at all. The thing, too, it did seem like the parents were kind of mourning or something. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like she wiped a tear from his eye and looked like they were consoling him. I mean, I don't know. I know people don't really feel any kind of sympathy or anything. Please hit like, guys. I would appreciate it. It helps out the stream a lot. And I'm sorry I'm streaming in the wrong FPS. I edit my videos in 60 FPS and I forgot to switch it back. <laughs> so, um, Tyler, I'm Tyler. Thank you so much for the super chat. Gracias. I hope you're doing amazing. Amazing. Here's a better one for you. This guy posted on Twitter. On 10-9, Cryreth and I walked past on the op opposing side where the partial remains were found yesterday and had no problem or issue with the water levels whatsoever. 
The canal bed was a good 10 feet or so below us the entire time. Oh, yeah, you know we got to watch this. Steven Bertolino went on prime time, I guess, over the phone and spoke with Chris Cuomo. Remember the last time we had Chris Cuomo, he kind of gave us some false information, but I want to hear the attorney talk. Aaron, thank you so much. Twitter DMs to see exact, the exact location. All right, I'll check it out. Play your chaos. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, Mel, dogs sure can hit on water. Four years ago, they helped find my brother-in-law after he drowned in a lake. Thanks for all you do. Sorry for your brother. Uh, condolences to you. Thank you for that information too, though. Insightful. I guess they can do that. I didn't know that. I saw that video. I'm Tyler. Thank you. Let's check opportunity. it out. Um, let's deal with the timing here. Why today? Why did the parents choose today to go to the preserve? Well, it is my understanding that the preserve was only open to the public as of yesterday. So my clients reached out to me and informed me that they wanted to go into to the preserve this morning. And I thought it would be wise to notify law enforcement of their intentions. I did so by text to my contact in the Northport Police Department. And they responded with, uh, thank you for the heads up. And then they met my clients there this morning. Why did they meet your clients there? Well, I presume they thought it would be a good idea just to accompany them in. Uh, they knew the press had been following my clients for weeks and weeks on end, and you'd have to ask them why they chose to come. They did not indicate to me last night that they would be there. They just, uh, again, <laughs> thanked me for the heads up. One quick question sideways, and then I uh, want you to take me through what you understand of how the discovery was made. Why didn't the parents ask to go sooner during all these agonizing weeks? Well, the parents had assumed that the experts, the FBI, and all the tracking teams that they had would be able to locate Brian based upon the information that we had provided them uh, to the specific areas and trails in the park that Brian liked to visit. The park had been closed to the public. There was really no other reason for the laundries to go search anywhere else. Mm. Now, let's deal with the specifics of today. Is the area that they were searching when these uh, discoveries were made, is this a new area? that the parents hadn't informed authorities about before? No, not at all. Indeed, this is the very area of the park that we initially informed uh, law enforcement on, I believe it was September 17th, that Brian uh, would be most likely in the preserve in this particular area. As, as I know it, near the bridge. I think it's the bridge that might connect uh, the Mayakahatchee Environmental Park with the Carlton Reserve. Was this a very deep way or distance into the preserve? No, Mr. Laundry informed me that it was, it was quite near the entrance. Uh, he didn't put an exact distance on it. He put a time frame of about 30 minutes in. Um, but uh, I, I would guess it could be a mile or two into the preserve. So can you help us understand how an area that the authorities were told about, uh, you say, by the parents that isn't even that deep into the preserve, wasn't located all these weeks with all the dogs and the teams and everything else until the parents showed up? Well, listen, the explanation that the FBI gave today certainly makes sense. If that area was underwater, one can certainly understand why you might not have been able to find the items that were located today. Um, if that water had cleared, you know, Two weeks ago, perhaps could have circled back and looked again. Uh, perhaps they meant to. Perhaps they were further deeper into the park and never got back to this park because it is so near the entrance. Chris and Roberta went to this area first. And as happenstance was. So really quick, uh, after this plays, Aaron did a really nice thing. He sent me a video on YouTube to show the area and the taped off location because I saw some people asking about that. So after this plays, we're going to watch his video. I uh, appreciate that, man. And uh, we're going to get the super chats. And like I said, we're just going to keep the information rolling. The stream is not meant to be dragged out because I want to present to you a new story. And I have to head out in a little bit. But uh, whatever comes to, we'll be back if I need to. Um, 
Amy, thank you for the super chat. A while back, they said that the dogs had gone to the same pond several different times, several different days slash times. Is this the same pond slash area? I don't want this to be him. Gabby and family deserve justice. That's a good question, and I have no idea. Maybe somebody could answer that. I'm not sure if this is the same place that those dogs, they were dogs hitting before. April, thank you for the super chat. Let's try this again. Why was BL not charged with grand theft? Uh, grand theft yet gets a fraud charge of a thousand dollars i think i meant I meant to be grand theft and under grand theft would it would it be a bigger charge i have no idea good question i have no idea christina this is the, i think i might have to get maybe we can collab with a lawyer one day they could answer some of these questions christina uh thank you for the super chat this must be this is the most crazy case ever and i will be mad if he's dead no answers Sister Sherry, thank you for the super chat. If my son was missing and I truly believe that he was, they couldn't keep me out of the park or swamp hole. The parents are sketch and odd. Thank you. They stumbled upon these items. All right, now the key understanding. What do you know from your clients about how the discovery was made? What was going on? You know, what did they tell you about how it happened? So fortunately, uh, one of your um, rival news people were there with a camera. And I say fortunately because, you know, some people don't believe how the events laid out today. Um, but Chris and Roberta walked into the preserve. It is my understanding that they were followed closely by the two law enforcement personnel. And when I say closely, certainly with an eye shot. And as they went further in, Chris ventured off the trail into the woods. He was zigzagging in different areas. Law enforcement was doing the same thing. And Roberta Laundry was walking down the trail. And I believe that is on some video to some other news outlet. At some point, Chris locates what's called a dry bag. The dry bag is a white bag laying in the woods, I'll say 20 feet or so off the trail. According to Chris, it was in some, some bramble. Chris didn't want to pick the bag up because he wanted the law enforcement to see it. This was caught on camera. Chris couldn't find the law enforcement because they were then out of sight because Chris had been in the woods. So he didn't want to leave the bag there with the news reporter standing nearby. So he picked it up. He did meet up shortly with law enforcement. They looked at the contents of the bag. At that time, law enforcement officers showed him a picture on the phone of a backpack that law enforcement had located also nearby and also some distance off the trail. At that point, the laundries were notified that there was also uh, remains near the backpack and they were asked to leave the preserve. What do you make of the suggestion that Mr. Laundry planted the bag and the backpack? Mm. In nice terms, it's hogwash. Um, would the authorities have known what mm. they want? In nice terms, it's hogwash. So I guess in his head, maybe he's thinking it's BS. They can want to say BS. Walked onto the trail with? Absolutely. They met them at the gate or somewhere nearby. They walked in with them. And more importantly, Chris, this is what I said. Fortunately for the laundries, the press was following them in the whole time. Why wouldn't the dogs have found these remains? You would have to ask. Ask the experts on that. that. That's not my expertise. If it was underwater, maybe the dogs couldn't, you know, detect the remains uh, underwater. Maybe the dogs were never brought back to that area. Um, and if for the people that just joined, you might have to rewind back a little bit. I just played a clip from News Nation where they had like a canine handler and I guess an expert and and somebody that actually also sent a super chat and said that's how their family member was found that they can detect human remains underwater. I don't know how, how, how low, like, like, I don't know how deep or whatever, but like they say that they can, you know, I don't, I don't know the whole, you know, all the, the details of it, but I it's, don't know. It's interesting. You have to ask someone else that question. What were your clients uh, reaction to what happened while they were there? You know, that also was caught on video and, you know, it, it's quite sad. You can imagine as a parent finding uh, your son's belongings alongside some of the remains and that's got to be heartbreaking and i can tell you that meters. they are heartbroken Do 30 uh, people are saying 30 meters tanya true crime thank you 30 meters and 15 feet i'm missing the chat's going so fast 
they believe it is their son? Chris, it's not about belief. I mean, as you said at, at the onset, the probability is strong that it is Brian's mm. remains, but we're going to wait. Almost 100 feet under. Wait until the forensic uh, results come in and, and verify that. Now, obviously, the family's under a veil of suspicion because of their lack of cooperation from the beginning, um, optically, in terms of contacting the Petitos, et cetera, and dealing with authorities. Um, the police gave the impression that the family delayed notifying them about Brian Laundrie's disappearance. Well, you say that they gave the impression. They, they've come out right and said it, and certain members of the uh, Northport Police Department have said it more than once. And 30 meters underwater, 15 feet underground. Thank you, uh, Tanya. And as I've discussed with you once before, let the record be clear. The laundries reported Brian did not come home the night he went out for the hike. I actually reported that to the FBI personally. On Friday the 17th, the FBI called me. We didn't call them. They called me and said, we have a tip that Brian was seen in Tampa and we want to see if he's in the house. After some back and forth, we agreed on a time. At 6.15, Friday the 17th, the FBI was going to come to the house. During that conversation with agreeing on the time, I said to them, if you got a tip, where did this come from? Because a member of the Northport PD gave a press conference the night before and said, we know where Brian is. He was asked again, do you know where Brian is? He said, we know exactly where Brian is. I immediately called my clients and said, hey, was Brian picked up? Do you know where he is? Because I don't know where he is. How do they know where he is if we don't? And that was on Thursday. On Friday, when the FBI came to the laundry residence, we then said, yes, we will fill out a missing person report. And that got twisted as though the family waited until Friday to report him missing, which is not how it happened. It's we unfair. It it's unfair in the micro, but it's understandable in the macro because it just doesn't look right that the parents haven't wanted to cooperate, that Brian didn't want to cooperate, that they wouldn't want to talk to the other family. So you can understand why people would be suspicious about their actions. Absolutely. And, you know, now's not the right time to talk about, you know, the situation with Gabby. But the family was following my directions. I, I told them not to talk to anybody, not to say a word. I was the, the uh, intermediary between the family and law enforcement. And that's why we're confident that, you know, law enforcement. 30 meters equals almost 100 feet. If you Google it, you can look it up online, the conversion. It's about, uh, it says like 98 or something. So pretty much 100 feet. That's what I see. Specifically, the FBI was informed. Brian did not come home that night. Whatever played out in those three days after that, that that's on the police and the FBI. That's not on the family, as I heard. That was it. I mean, that's the longest conversation I've seen this guy have, Stephen Bertolino, the laundry family attorney. Um, let me read the super chats real quick. I also wanted to show you Cassie, and then we'll get to the video that was sent to me. I want to try to keep the information flowing. Uh, Lori, thank you for the super chat. How close is the scene to the entrance of the reserve? I'm going to take a look at Aaron's video. I'm going to play that in a second. I don't know if he covered that, but we'll, we'll see now. Uh, the forensic astrologer, follow the Bertolinos and Joseph Laundry and Money. Silvio, my friend, kept talking about Joseph, bringing him up as well. Lori, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for your coverage on this. Gracias, YouTube sewers. Cadaver dogs can smell 30 meters underwater from the surface. Tracking dogs can follow a scent trail for 130 miles. Not buying it. Ooh, interesting. Okay, good information. Thanks. Katie, in regards to grand theft, they only charge what they think they can prove. They likely have documented proof that Brian had permission to drive. Thanks, Katie. Lone Wolf, the parents didn't know that they were being videotaped when the father went straight to the area. The video was before the parents met police. Yeah, they were. They looked like they were alone. It was an interesting clip to see. Maybe we'll play it again before we end. Maria Z, thank you for the super chat. Excited to 
have caught you live. You're the only coverage I've watched on this case. You're, you've done a great job. Thank you so much. Appreciate that a lot. If you guys could hit like too, I'd really, really appreciate that. And like I said earlier, new video premiering right after this live stream. If you could go support that as well, that would be dope. Appreciate that. Um, oh, yeah. Stephen Bertolino, thank Casey. To look around. And I notified the Northport police, um, who I believe notified the FBI, and they met them there this morning at 7 a.m. Um, in the area where they found uh, presumably Brian's belongings, is this an area that Chris showed police two weeks ago when he aided in the search? I can't say for certain that Chris showed this particular area to police uh, at that point in time, but I can say that this is an area that we initially notified the FBI that Brian liked to hike in. Um, and can you tell us about how the parents are doing? How are Chris and Roberta right now? Well, as you can imagine, the, the parents are very distraught. Uh, like everyone else, they're going to wait for the results of the forensic identification before making any further comments. Uh, but at this moment in time, you know, they're, they're grieving. To look around. That's that clip there. Now, a little bit of, get you a full screen. Cassie Laundry outside today. Seen outside. She's being followed and pursued. Let me show you that I found this actual video clip. I thought it was a little weird how they were like following her though, whoever it was, because they fought. Apparently, I think they followed her to like while well, they were dropping off their kids at the bus stop, which is kind of a little bit weirdo stuff, if you ask me. Hey, bro, don't they'll be coming at my kids' school bus stop like that, all right? I know you got this, all this, whatever. Look, it's Eric, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going on and everything, but you got kids and stuff. It's really effective. It's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Cassie, have you spoken to the guy? Don't care. Listen, my kids. Or Cassie, Cassie, whatever, whatever about your kids. Cassie, have you have you spoken to uh, about uh, Christopher? And stuff. These people don't care. They don't get. They got no kind of decency. They don't give a. You know. It's really effective. It's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Cassie, have you spoken to the FBI or police about? Yeah, at least they didn't capture the kids, I guess. I guess that's the decency there. It's been happening. Thank you. Just do this next time after the bus. How about that? Damn. And I bet you there was more, but I guess they were like, we shouldn't post the kids because that'll back backfire on us. But I'm like, damn, you following these people to the bus stop? Hey, bro. Don't, they'll be coming at my kids' school bus stop like that, all right? I know you got this, all this, whatever. Look, it's Eric, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going on and everything, but you got kids and stuff. It's really effective. It's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Bro, in some place, some people would have <laughs> probably done have something. Have you spoken to the FBI or police? I know it wouldn't benefit them at all to do, to do anything to the media. You know, it would look really bad and they'd it'd blow up all over the news. It's about but. what's been happening. <laughs> Thank you. She said, of course I have. I think that's what she said. Just do this next time after the bus stop. And he's still being nice too. Like, please, just after the bus stop. Like, let me just drop off my kids. Jesus. But, um, Cassie Laundry was pictured Thursday morning with two cookies and her phone in her hand outside of the Lakewood Ranch, Florida home. I don't know why they have to describe the cookies too. Like, what does it matter? Two cookies. We're watching everything you do. Every little piece of thing that you do. Everything in your hand. What were the cookies for, huh? Is that for Brian? The sighting of Cassie came a day after the FBI revealed a backpack and notebook belonging to Brian Laundry had been discovered. Uh, and that, that's kind of it. But I was, I was a little, I was like, oh, okay. Is that the cookies? Oh yeah, that's the cookies. Cookie Gate. So that was that. Uh, looking really quickly as well to uh, Brian Enton's post. He posted a little bit ago, two hours ago. We have learned the remains found in the Carlton Reserve were skeletal remains, bones. The medical examiner says he does not expect to have an identification of remains today. Oh, yeah, we got to watch the press conference as well. The family attorney says that there's a strong possibility that the remains found in the search area are Brian. 
TMZ, eh, it's just kind of like a useless article, but this was the last known photos with Brian and Gabby. I mean, not much here, but this was, uh, I think this is Arches National Park, yeah. A little bit of more video with them searching. The other video gives us more to see. That was like really brief. We're going to watch the press conference as well. We're going to we're gonna get to that video of my friend in a second, Aaron. Let me just try to make sure we get through everything as quickly as possible. This was the one we saw earlier, kind of. Oh, the other one's better, though. This one's kind of small, the resolution. We see him kind of off in the distance. I guess this is where he found it. Press conference from earlier today as well. Chief Garrison, moccasins, alligators, and these heroes go out there. While we can't change the outcome, we can bring justice. And today I'm very, very proud to say that Chief Garrison and our team of law enforcement, which is regional, it doesn't matter what color patch or uniform you wear, we work as one team and one family. And the law enforcement community came together, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. Chief Garrison, like to say a few words? Well, thank you, Sheriff. Uh, it means a lot. Um, as we said yesterday, not one agency can handle all of this, and it's important that we rely on our partners and uh, Sheriff Carmine Marcino and Sheriff Kurt Hoffman have been uh, huge, <laughs> huge players in helping this uh, investigation throughout, also with the FBI. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You know, it's uh, challenging times. I know everybody wants to know exactly what's going on every second possible. Uh, all of America's watching, okay? But we'll never, never jeopardize an investigation to give that information out until the time is right. But again, I want to reiterate, this is a difficult business we're in the law enforcement. Things change by the second, by the minute. These are very, very difficult conditions. I mean, you're searching in areas that you just can't walk up and look. It's not like you're searching a house or a apparently car. Christopher, apparently Christopher just walked up and did it. But These areas are huge and they're covered by water. So I couldn't be more proud of the team. Once again, I mean, Sheriff Hoffman from Sarasota, we're all one family. Sheriff's done a great job. Chief Garrison and our FBI, second to none, they came, they came together from all over. We're talking about, you know, different states of communication here. And the end result is one team, one family working to bring closure. Again, our thoughts and prayers are with the family members. And... Um, it's tragedy. Thank you. Do you think if the laundries would have cooperated sooner, that you would have found him sooner? Was this a press conference to just say thank you? Chief, is there any <laughs> information? Was there Bro, you heard that reporter. He was a little shot out. I was like, was this a press conference just to say thank you? Any point of the press conference? What was? Was there any point of this press conference? Man, the reporter's getting kind of rowdy. Chief, did you find anything new today? Chief, can you give us any new information? What was your role in this? Is that the attorney? Thank you guys. Great job. Appreciate it. That was it. Uh, let me get the super chats. We still got a couple of things to go through trying to jam pack everything in i appreciate you guys joining too this afternoon man thank you for coming through and thank you for the people that were here yesterday that was crazy was it a four hour stream or three i think it was like four man um 
Jen, thank you for the super chat. I think he had plastic surgery to change his appearance, and the parents got the tissue removed in surgery to make it look like he was dead. I haven't heard that one. That's a new one. <laughs> Rocky Mountain High. I call BS on this story. The Addy is spinning. I love your NASA t-shirt. Love your show. Keep, thanks for keeping us. Thanks for keeping us up to date. Thank you, Rocky. Appreciate it. Capri, so they found them. Is it finally over? Well, they haven't confirmed the remains, but everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody. Most people believe that it's Brian, but there's a lot of people that think it's not him. If it's not him, yo, my head's going to like, boom, like explode. Marketing with Moy. If it isn't Brian, I'm going to believe this lawyer is like Saw from Breaking Bad. They already had a meme for him and somebody made a, a thing. Better call Bertolino. Snappy Snapfire. At the start of this, of all of this, I told my wife to consider that maybe he went out there found a gator big enough to eat him and then off himself possibility very possible especially that i don't know what kind of remains there is but i guess it's not a lot and where's the rest of it they haven't found it yet I, and i think they sent out some canine today as well ashley brian seeing the water he just sat there and drowned i don't know i think something had to happen to him nancy uh champagne thank you for the super chat the dre effect okay mel now you should do a whole live in that English slash Australian accent. <laughs> Queen of Abundance, you crack me up when you do the voices. Thank you for all you for your daily work. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate the super chats. Thank you, guys. Charlotte, thank you for the super chat. All right. This was kind of like Chief, a can you angle. give us... It's kind of loud, too. Let me turn it down. We don't need to watch this, though. This was just another uh, angle Brian Enton posted. I fixed the volume for you guys. Our drones, the Dragonfish. Dragonfish has the capability of flying 67 miles an hour and 18.6 miles. It sets immediately. The prayers are with Gabby and the family. So it does look like the Northport Police Chief is also going to be here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, before we sit here, uh, I'm sorry, it's right here. It's right here, okay. Good morning, everybody. It's kind of like the unedited version, I guess. First, I'd like to say, uh, before I say one word, our thoughts and prayers are with Gabby and the family. Here, for the beginning of the incident, we deployed assets immediately, resources, deputies, <laughs> our feral system, we can analyze a crime scene and save hours and hours of, of man hours. Our drones, the dragonfish, dragonfish has the capability of flying 67 miles an hour and 18.6 miles away from the... Yeah, that's a pretty sick drone. Operator with the FLIR and all the capabilities of a helicopter. Today when I walked back there, I got to see firsthand the treacherous conditions that they were working on. We're talking about water levels up above almost the chest area. Rattlesnakes, moccasins, alligators. And these heroes go out there. While we can't change the outcome, we can bring justice. And today, I'm very, very proud to say that Chief Garrison and our team of law enforcement, which is regional, it doesn't matter what color patch or uniform you wear, we work as one team and one family. And the law enforcement community came together, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. Chief Garrison, like say a few words? It means a lot. Um, as we said yesterday, not one agency can handle all of this. And it's important that we rely on our partners. And uh, Sheriff Carmine Marcino and Sheriff Kurt Hoffman have been uh, huge, huge players in helping this uh, investigation throughout, also with the FBI, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You know, it's uh, challenging times. I know everybody wants to know exactly what's going on every second possible. Uh, all of America's watching, okay? But we'll never, never jeopardize an investigation. So this part we heard, I just wanted to get the, because the edited version kind of cut out the start. Brian Enton had like the fuller beginning part. To give that information, this is difficult business to wear in the law for 13 hours. Yeah, so we heard all that. This is JB. Skeletal human remains being examined in laundry search. Mm. Oh, this is another video. Momo sent me this. Kind of the same thing. I gotta get this bigger. So. Let me fix myself. Uh, there we go.
a lot of people are kind of looking at this video. We, we This is like the third time we've watched it on the stream, so... But a lot of people are looking at this kind of suspiciously. Now the Brian Laundry sightings have quieted. Well, this is another one, too. This is interesting. I haven't seen this. Momo sent this. Let's make it bigger with the hearts. <laughs> Why Roberta all dressed up right as they found articles at the reserve immediately following a random delivery to their house. We're watching. Every step. That's Brian impersonating his mom. They're all in on this. Somebody said that. And I got a bunch of... Uh, a 2,500 likes. I guess people really believe that's Brian dressed up as his mom. Oh, they're saying it's not Roberta? That's not Roberta at all, people. Come on, she just didn't drop 50 pounds on walk. I don't know, bro. So, yeah. What to do I'll leave if that, someone grabs you? I'll leave that as unknown. <laughs> Maybe it's not Roberta. Uh, all right. This one kind of shows a little bit of the water level as well. There was a more complicated one that I kind of didn't understand. I'll show you that one too. I don't know if it's really complicated. I just kind of had a hard time interpreting it. But let me take myself off here. 915, 9.15, I guess maybe nine feet. Oh yeah, values in feet. Nine feet, laundry reported missing, 917. Remains found four feet. So uh, 1020. So with the video that we saw at the beginning of this stream, regardless if it's 9 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, those dogs, even under, if it was underwater, would have been able to smell human remains. So was that recently there? Did he just recently die? Is that even Brian? I don't know, bro. Now let me show you a video that this guy sent me, Aaron. Thank you for this video. What's going on, Ikid Mel Stream? Uh, I wanted to submit this video prior uh, to going Thank live you, today. Hopefully, you see this, and if you want to use this on your stream, feel free. Uh, I just wanted to clarify and show some people exactly where the kind of taped-off section, almost pentagon-shaped section, uh, is uh, in relation to the map of the Carlton Reserve. So. I'm zoomed in right now. I'm actually going to zoom out and show you guys kind of which way I'm looking on the map. So I'm like north is actually east for me right now. So it's just, it just makes more sense for how I'm going to match up the footage to the WFLA helicopter footage. Um, so real quick, a lot of the footage that you guys are seeing of uh, people outside of the Carlton Reserve mm. is happening right here on this road. Um, and you will see if I move... This is a really nice breakdown, man. Thank you, Aaron, for sending that because that answers some of the questions too from the super chat. My screen over a little bit. This is kind of where all the cameras are lined up and you see all the vehicles coming in and out of the reserve. Um, that's happening right here uh, at this big curved section of road. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go back to the 2D view. I'm going to turn it once over to where we're looking directly. North is technically directly east. And so if we go straight over uh, into the reserve, it's going to be this section right here. Okay, so if we're looking mm. at the map with north being true north, this is what we're looking at. Okay, we're looking at Northport and we go to the beginning of the trail. So this is where the people are parked. And then it would be this section, uh, this little clearing right here that that they're working with okay so i'm going to zoom into the exact section and show you that right here is actually where they have uh taped off an area uh with the little tent so let me go ahead and um, split screen this 
and match it up with the WFLA mm. uh, news footage or the chopper footage. So as it zooms out, we're going to be able to see uh, right here. So what we're looking at right now is that police or that whatever that was right there in the trees, that truck or whatever is probably right around here. And then as we zoom out a little bit more, you're going to see that white piece right there possibly is this. I don't know if that's there all the time, if it's like a little shack or a roof of some sort. Um, and then you're already seeing a little bit of a clearing here. That's going to be this clearing right here. So you can even see kind of the shape right here of the clearing is the same shape there. So what we're seeing with uh, this little bit right up here, if you can see my mouse, this is that little tent that they popped up to kind of wrap the uh, tape around. So as it zooms out more, we're going to be able to see now this shape of pooled water right here isn't going to be the same all the time, right? So it's not the exact same shape because water uh, clearly right now is still receding. And so at this satellite image, the, the water is probably receded more. So we're seeing a little bit more land. However, the trees line up. So we've got a bunch of three trees right here, a little bunch, one, two, three, and a baby tree right here. And so we have one, two, three, and a baby tree right here. So you can see right here is where uh, they have that taped off section. So if we zoom out a little bit more, this section where the trucks are is going to be this section right here. So those two trucks right there are parked exactly where my mouse is at right now because you can see it wraps around. It's almost a C-shaped section. This is the C-shaped section. And you can even see this little area of a uh, clearing in view as well so as it zooms out we're going to confirm this even more as it moves over we're now seeing this section of clearing and we see that the water is obviously less pulled up in the live cam footage right now and then we're seeing this shape of tree or this bend of trees right here that's exactly this bit of tree uh, and then this little bit of uh, runoff or, or whatever it would be, it would be this right here. And then if we hit play again, we're now at this section of the map. And then if it zooms out, we're now starting to see the top of this section of road, which is right here. And like I said at the beginning of the video, right here is where everyone is kind of gathering outside the reserve, waiting for law enforcement to come out. Um, if we go to 3D view, we almost get uh, an exact kind of angle. You can almost match it up directly. Um, so as you can see, it zooms in right here. This is all, all the media lined up. Um, and there's that building. So once again, if you zoom up from here, it's the, the chopper is going to kind of continue. I'm going to pause that. It's going to kind of just be moving around. But if we zoom up, zoom out from here, it's not these. It's this right here. This is exactly where they have uh, a taped off a section. They've got some trucks and things throughout these little clearings. Um, so if we look at this map once more from the top in full screen, I'm going to go ahead and make myself much smaller we can see that and i'm gonna i'm gonna make north true north so we're looking now directly north is north uh, this is where they are pinpointing right now and you can see it's really not far from the entrance to the reserve um, it's really not far at all and in fact we can go ahead and uh we can get the exact distance. So the distance, if I drag this out from just a direct line from the parking lot or from where everyone right now is sitting outside the reserve, it is roughly 10,000 feet. No, um, one point. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 3,275 3, feet. So 5,280 feet is a mile. So it's under a mile uh, into the reserve directly, like a direct shot. Um, it's 
probably a little bit more than that considering he had to kind of probably navigate or whoever to place the material that they found or the items that they found uh, is likely um, just at probably a mile of like total hiking in uh, to the reserve. So anyways, I know that this was like a seven minute section. It's kind of lengthy, but I wanted to show uh, exactly uh, exactly where Brian uh, or, or they're honing in on those remains, whether it's Brian or not, we will find out. Um, but yeah, man, uh, keep up the good stream and, uh, hopefully we have some answers soon. Dude, that was peace. Amazing. Thank you for that video, man. Oh my gosh. That was a good breakdown. Um, I think you should post that video, dude. He has it unlisted. Uh, I think you should post it, man. And if you post it, I'll share it. I think that was a really good breakdown. I think it'll help people get like a visual and stuff. Uh, Aaron's been messaging me on Twitter and, um, Sending me different screenshots of like the helicopter stuff. Uh, oh, and I, you did reach out to me. I uh, wish we, we should click up sometime, man. That was a really good job. Thank you, man. I think you should post it on your channel. Let me know. I put the link in my description, but I, I think you should post it because I think it'll give people a, a nice breakdown and you do a really good job at it. So thank you so much for that, man. I appreciate that. Uh, let me get the super chats real quick. We're going to premiere a new video as well, man. I got to get out of here soon. I got to go pick up my daughter. Um, and I'm going to do a sweep real quick too. if there's any updates. So it doesn't look like it was that far in as far as like where the remains were found to where the entrance is as like that particular entrance. Uh, let's see where I left off at. <laughs> um, Charlotte, thank you for the super chat. And Tyler, Melvin, apparently Chris walked up and just did. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Ali, uh, how did the water where he was found get? How deep did the water get? I don't know how deep it was, but like that little thing that I just showed. Here's an, oh, the other breakdown is what I meant to show you guys. Let me show you that. Momo sent this to me. I don't know where it was posted. I guess it was on Twitter. According to this, 19 feet, September 14. I mean, this one, I'm a little confused as to how to interpret it. Oh, here's the feet. 18 feet. So it rose and then it dropped. 10-7, Chris L. brings L.E. to the same area. 10-17, entrance taped off remains found water level drop but and I, I appreciate this map as well but according to what we saw with the canine handler whether it was 20 feet i mean the only thing is maybe access to the area but those dogs would have been able to you know smell the remains unless those remains are recent you know i don't know let me get the rest of this here uh Kristen s people give brian too much credit I, sometimes I think so too, but at the same time, I don't know how he, unless he's been dead this entire time, I don't know how he evaded law enforcement, FBI, and just people in general. Chris and S, thank you for that. Unicorn, what if this was all a hoax? I don't think it's a hoax. <laughs> and I'm not sure if you mean all, like how much of all, like what does that encompass, right? Like Brian's death you're talking about, or because Gabby's certainly dead. The Dre effect, FBI seems to have more sympathy for BL's family. Thank you, Ashley. Better call Bert. Wendy Ellsworth. Maybe he contacted his parents and told them he's going to kill himself there that day. And that's why they knew to go out there exactly where to go. Thank you. Marketing with Moy. He's bragging about the equipment used like it helped find Brian. True. True. Katie. Plot twist. The remains aren't Brian. He killed someone else. Yo, my friend told me this yesterday on the phone. and I'm like, nah. Silvio, nah, man, nah, because you know Silvio, he smokes and stuff. Nah, man, he killed someone else and is walking around in. Oh no, well now, now you pass the the limit of walking around in their skin suit. LMA, oh, love you, Mel. Get some sleep tonight. I did. I slept last night really well. Thank you, Terry. You know I'll collaborate with you on any legal question you or your viewers may have. Also, you're doing an amazing job with this and other cases. The geologist in Arizona is fascinating. 
Thank you. Yeah, I worked really hard to put that video together. It that story is crazy too. If you're into like twists and turns, that story should have more attention. KP, my thought is he hung himself and gradual decomp of body fell to the ground. Oh, maybe. I didn't think about that. I don't know. Maybe why he wasn't seen by drone or searchers. But I would think, I mean, unless animals got to him too, maybe he fell and then animals got to him and that's what all that's left. Charlotte, thank you for the super chat. Hi, I'm sure it's Brian. I think it's Brian too. Joy, thank you for the super chat. And Tyler, job well done. Thanks, Aaron. Gracias. Um, all right. So if you guys could please hit like, I would really appreciate that, man. Thank you guys so much for coming through on the stream. You guys really showed up. Thank you. Jennifer said, thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vicky. Thank you for being a new member. Shannon Cates, thank you for the super chat. Isa, get yourself some coffee. Thanks for covering this story. Truly appreciate it. Thank you, man. So hang here one second. Do not leave. Don't leave. This new story is only going to take like, it's about 25 minutes. The four-year-old that's missing in Australia disappeared from the campsite. They were all camping together. Strange. Odd. So I'm going to move you guys over to the new video. It's going to look like a stream. Don't leave yet. Amy, thank you for the super chat. Don't leave yet. How do I do this? <laughs> Where's it at? Where's it at? There we go. We're going to bomb my own stream. So when I end this stream, give it like, I don't know, 20 seconds. It's going to look like it's over and that's it. You got to give it a chance to move you over to the new stream. I'm going to move you guys over there. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you so much for coming through. And I want to keep this stream just very compact and back to back info. No three hours today, but we'll see when we do a call in next time, right? Thank you guys so much. Love you. Let's go.